Hello everyone. I think it's time for us to get started. Uh, thanks everyone who is joining us. Um, my name is Mars Tatonaliev. I would like to thank uh, everyone who is joining us and welcome to today's CNCF webinar. Uh, metal Cubed, uh, Kubernetes Native Bare, me bare Metal Host Management. Um, I'll be moderating today's webinar. We would like to welcome our presenters today, um, Mael Kimmerlin, Senior Software Engineer at Ericsson Software Technology, Perujon Moyasarov, a Cloud Developer at Ericsson Software Technology, and Pep Toro Mauri, Senior Software Engineer at Red Hat. And before we, before we start, a few housekeeping items. Um, during the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end of the presentation. Uh, this is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such, it is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that will be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and the slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at cncf.io slash webinars. Uh, with that, I will kick off today's presentation and you guys are welcome to start. Great. Um, let me quickly share my screen. I hope you can see it. Um, hello, everyone, um, and thanks for joining this webinar. We're um, really, really happy to present to MetalCube, and thanks for uh, giving us a chance to introduce you the project called MetalCube. Um, so, but before we jump into the actual topic and start talking about MetalCube, just uh, a small introduction about ourselves. My name is um, Ferris John Wilsarf and I'm working as a experienced developer at Ericsson. Yep, and my name is Mel Kimela. I'm also working in Ericsson. Yeah, I'm Pep uh, and I work at Red Hat. <clears throat> Great, thank you guys. Um, so what is Metal Cube? Um, why do we need it? What problems that it solve? So first of all, it's a um, um, bare metal host provisioning tool that allows you to, to manage your um, bare metal nodes through the Kubernetes APIs. So you might be wondering why do we need it? Because there are already a bunch of like existing tools um, to manage the bare metal host. Uh, but the main difference and the goal of the <clears throat> metal cube is to manage uh, your bare metal nodes through the Kubernetes native APIs. We want to have something that could live in the ecosystem of the Kubernetes, let's say. So MetalCube also offers you um, a plugin for the another Kubernetes sub-project um, called Cluster API, um, about which we'll talk a bit more in the next couple of slides. Um, MetalCube is also self-hosted, meaning that all the um, custom controllers and all the building blocks are uh, running within your Kubernetes cluster, <clears throat> which kind of avoids the the having the need to to have an extra uh, tooling to manage the the metal cube itself right so you need of course a uh, kubernetes cluster for the metal cube and that kind of eliminates the need for many many problems that you might encounter other ways um in fact it's very uh, young project um but currently we're seeing more and more uh, interest from different communities um and a lot of different contributions which is really nice um, and then the last one is that it's a CNCF sandbox project currently. Um, it's been, I guess, a couple of months that we entered um, this cycle. All right. Um, oops. So um, <clears throat> let's, like, during the talk, you will be hearing quite many times about the word cluster API or in short, CAPI. So I think it makes sense to just give you some kind of brief introduction about what Cluster API is so that you have some good idea about the next slides. So the Cluster API is the Kubernetes um, sub-project. It's uh, focused on the cluster lifecycle and it allows you to um, do the management of your clusters um, in many, many different cloud environments, but not only cloud, but it could be even the bare metal, right? Uh, all the components of the cluster API are running within the Kubernetes cluster and it manages your target clusters which are running somewhere in the cloud. So to start with the cluster API, basically you need uh, some kind of Kubernetes cluster. And that cluster has 
different names, but they all mean the same. Uh, so for example, some in some contexts you might hear management, in some contexts you might hear even from us like ephemeral or the source cluster. So uh, Cluster API um, comes with its own client called Cluster CTL, um, which you can use to spin up the clusters in your desired environment. Um, for example, to start the uh, your clusters in desired environment, you start usually with Cluster CTL in it. And then there are different flags, but we focus on the infrastructure provider. <clears throat> so here you can pass the infrastructure in which you want to spin up your target cluster. Um, for example, you may want to create a cluster on Google Cloud, so you just pass infrastructure GCP, or you want to create a cluster on AWS, or you may want to create a cluster on Azure. But in our case, you may, uh, in our case, it's a metal cube. So uh, that's the plugin that I uh, previously mentioned. It. So if you want to create a cluster on bare metal infrastructure, or let's say in your data center, then you may want to choose, for example, metal cube, which will take care of uh, provisioning your uh, real bare metal nodes in the um, uh, in the bare metal infrastructure so imagine the let's take a small use case and see how it really uh, ends up in the bare metal infrastructure so imagine that you want to create a small cluster that has um, three nodes one master node and two worker nodes and you want uh, these two nodes uh, three nodes sorry to to be represented by your physical nodes because we're in the context of the bare metal so what sorry uh, what happens is that um, between like kubernetes node and then the actual physical server uh, there is a like a couple of layers or the processes involved so the first thing is that a cluster api project comes with its own um, custom resources uh, custom controllers of course um, one of the object is called, or the resource is called machine, which actually represents your Kubernetes node. Uh, machine is actually um, generic across all the providers. <clears throat> so it doesn't know about any provider yet, but what it knows is that it knows, uh, it, it has a reference to, to the desired infrastructure. For example, if you are about to create a cluster in, in Amazon, uh, then Amazon or AWS, you will have AWS machine object, uh, which will be created by the uh, AWS infrastructure provider. Or if it's Google, then it will be taken care of by the uh, GCP infrastructure provider for the cluster API. But let's focus on the metal cube this right now. So after the machine has object has created, uh, metal cube will take care of, let's say, creating the metal cube machine object that will be referenced by the CAPI machine object. And after that, we have another kind of the controller or the operator to be exact, um, which is called bare metal operator that actually knows how to really talk to your underlying infrastructure or to your uh, real physical machines. But we, we have another object that is controlled by the bare metal operator. Uh, it's called bare metal host. And that bare metal host is, has like really one-to-one -one kind of almost one-to-one -one mapping between your server. It, it has a lot of data about your actual servers. It, it knows, it has, it stores a lot of information like for example, um, the CPU, disk, RAM and all, all this kind of stuff. And then you can manage everything through the bare metal host. But that's basically uh, the chain of the objects. Uh, which end up, which which help you to create the node in the in the bare metal infrastructure, let's say. Um, so coming to the metal cube now. So metal, let's focus on the metal cube stack and see what metal cube actually brings and how does it really uh, manage the bare metal infrastructure or the servers. So imagine that you have uh, a couple of servers, like a physical servers that you want to manage, you want to provision, and then you want to bring them into the cluster, into the Kubernetes cluster. So the first thing that you need to do is that, uh, of course, on another node, you need a Kubernetes cluster because Metal Cube is running inside the Kubernetes. So you can start with very minimalistic, like a small Kubernetes cluster to start with. And on top of that, you can install bare metal operator, which is, uh, as I already mentioned, component of the Metal Cube that knows how to talk to your underlying infrastructure. And only just by running the bare metal operator, you are already a bit, uh, able to manage your servers. You are already able to provision them with your desired image and so on, for example. But if you want to extend the capability of the metal cube, and then if you want to have the features that are also provided by the cluster API, then you will have to use uh, another component of the metal cube called cluster API provider metal cube. 
So this is the plugin that I already, uh, earlier mentioned <clears throat> that we basically plug into the cluster API and now cluster API knows how to create uh, nodes, for example, bare metal nodes or bare metal cluster, let's say, uh, through the metal cube, right? So in the, in the next slide, we will briefly talk about uh, custom controllers that we've built in the metal cube and then uh, some of the objects. Uh, but before we jump one more thing uh, about the navigation. Um, so if you go to the Metal Cube GitHub uh, organization, you will see four pinned uh, GitHub repos, um, which you might already know as based on the slides that I showed earlier. But the first thing is the Metal Cube docs where you will find a lot of uh, design documents. Uh, it's always growing because we're uh, having more and more contribution, more features are being added. So this is the place where we're storing some documentation for like design docs, but also currently started uh, writing the, our doc for the whole project uh, or extending the existing documents. Uh, the second component that I mentioned is, that knows how to interact with the underlying infrastructure is the bare metal operator that is living in a separate GitHub repository as you're seeing in the middle here. Then you have um, Cluster API Provider Metal Cube, which is the plugin for the Cluster API project. And then we have another uh, repository that we're using for testing and development purposes called Metal Cube DevEnv, uh, about which we will shortly talk in the, uh, uh, in the next slides. Okay. So now let's go through the, these repositories or the components of the Metal Cube and see what they are or how they are like working and how they are really, really uh, presenting our objects. Miley? Yeah, sure. Let's start then with the bare metal operator. So um, as Ferro's already mentioned, this is the um, really the base building block of, of um, Metal Cube. That's what we use to manage the, the hardware, right? Um, it's a standalone thing, so you can use it without uh, having the, the uh, cluster API integration. And that would allow you, for example, to just um, provision some nodes without integrating them into a, into a Kubernetes cluster, for example. And then you can do whatever you, you want on top of the, uh, on the, of the node provision, because the, um, we have a feature like that we can inject cloud init data uh, to the nodes, and that allows you to um, to adapt and run whatever you want on top of the of the provision nodes. So bare metal operator standalone um, and really the base for for metal cube. Then how does it really work with the um, with the hardware that we have under the hood? Um, so the bare metal operator has this representation that that was already mentioned. This bare metal host and the bare metal host represents the physical hardware. There's only two requirements to be able to um, to like start managing that hardware. It's first to know all the details with, about your BMC, this baseboard management controller. Um, you need the credentials, you need the address, uh, maybe the certificate, uh, the, if the CA, if you're using a specific certificate, but um, anything like that allows you to to manage that node directly. So that also implies that you need to have connectivity between the cluster where you're running the metal operator and the BMCs of your uh, hardware. And then the second thing you need is the host MAC address. The host MAC address is used to identify the node when it boots, um, uh, which like which um, bare metal host we're talking about, like when it boots using Ironic. Once you have those two things and they are put in the bare metal host, you're ready to go and you can like kick in the kick in the deployment process. So um, yeah, the let's talk a bit about how bare metal operator uh, interacts with the, those uh, different components. So um, Ferus, if you can go through like put everything at once or right away. So there is the um, there is two uh, two things actually like behind this bare metal host. The, there's the bare metal host itself, the object that represents your hardware, but there's also a secret that is attached to that um, uh, to that um, bare metal host, and that secret contains the username and the password for the BMC, right? So then, in the bare metal host, in the in the CR, you have um, a, a field that references the the credentials that that you are using here, called the credentials name, and then the address also of the of the BMC. Then you put the MAC address that you want, and then 
um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, and then you can specify if you want it, if you want the node to be on or off. So we're, we're going to dive deeper in the fields uh, right after. So let's go to the next slide. So you have the bare metal host, and then the bare metal operator like keeps reconciling that object. Um, can you please put the yeah? Then um, we are now like going to to look in details like what are the fields of this bare metal host and how can you like um, use it to to manage your, your server right? So um, as any other Kubernetes object, there is an API version and a kind. So the API is uh, metalcube.io. It's v1 alpha one because it's still under development, and the kind is bare metal host. Then you have the spec part of that object. The spec contains a lot of um, information, like how you want the, the state. Basically, you, you declare there the state you want your bare metal uh, host to be in. So the first thing you have to give, obviously, we just already talked about it, is the BMC, the address, and the name of the secret in which you store the credentials. Then you specify the boot MAC address of the node. That's that one MAC address the node um, will use to PXE boot. So, and that's going to be used to match um, which node is being booted to like which bare metal host uh, we're talking about. Then you can specify the boot mode, whether you want it UEFI or legacy. And after that, um, you have, so, yeah, Okay, good. Um, you have the consumer ref field. The consumer ref um, is the um, object that is currently consuming the bare metal host, if any. So this doesn't have to be set, but if you're using the cluster API metal cube um, provider, then you will uh, have this set to the actual metal cube machine that is currently consuming the bare metal host. The next field that we have in the bare metal host is the image field. So that's where you specify the image you want to have written to the disk of your um, hardware. So this should be available over um, like, like an HTTP uh, request. Um, and you need to provide the checksum and the type of the checksum and then the format that you use to um, that the the, the image is using. When you specify that image, then what's going to happen is that Ironic will uh, start the um, temporary uh, image uh, using an ISO uh, that is called um, IPA, Ironic Python Agent. That IPA will then download the image that you um, just gave here, write it to the disk, and then reboot from disk, so that allowing you to start um, start the, the node with the, the OS provisioned and directly from the disk. It will also write the cloud init data, and that's what we're coming in now, that uh, there are a couple of fields, the next one being the metadata. Um, that is basically the, the a, a set of like fields that you, you can give that will be used to render the cloud init um, user data and network data given. So you can give, for example, in the metadata, like the name, the host name of the of the node and any other field, like it's like a map. So you can give whatever you want in there. Then there is the network data. The network data, um, well, okay, yeah, exactly. The network data is um, a reference to a secret. And that secret contains the network configuration that will be applied by Cloudinit on the node. So you can do all the networking um, uh, configuration from there if you don't want to do it through the user data in Cloudinit. So the next field um, is just this online field. It's basically a switch, like is it on or off? And then the, the following field is the user data. So this contains all the, um, all the um, Cloudinit, like the, let's say, um, core data given by the user. And it allows you to do a lot of configuration. It's really, really powerful. Um, you can create users, you can run comments, you can like install packages. Like it's, it's, it really allows you to do a lot of things. So then once, um, once you have Cloudinit booted, uh, sorry, once you have the node booted, then Cloudinit will kick in. So the in image need to have Cloudinit installed. And of course, uh, we're talking about Cloudinit now, but it could be exactly the same thing with Ignition. So um, Cloudinit will kick, kick in, and then once um, it's uh, started, it will like read the, the data that was written by Ironic on a specific part of the disk, and then use that to, to perform, the, uh, perform the setup of the node. 
Then the last field here in the spec is called root device hints. So when you're on uh, physical hardware, you probably have uh, multiple disks and you probably want to specify one specifically that would be the, um, the, the root, like let's say the OS disk. Um, it could even be read. Like, uh, so you're going to give what's called here root device hints. So it's, it's basically basic hints that um, are telling Ironic to choose how to choose the disk on which it's going to write the image. You can give the name, you can give uh, some, some things like HTTL, for example, or some like um, identifier like this. There's quite a broad range of fields available there that allow you to uh, specify which disk exactly you want. And it will default, um, like Ironic has its own way to, to, to default the, the selection that to a disk that is writable and more than four gigabyte. But if, of course, if that doesn't fit you and you want to be much more specific, then you can give anything here in, the, in those root device hints and it's going to be matched um, with what's on the, on the node. And if there's a match, that disk will be selected for writing the image. Then the, um, status part of that uh, object. It contains a lot of information about your node. So the node will, when like created, it will go through a process that is called introspection. And the introspection gathers all the data of the node. And this data will be put in a field called hardware. You will have, for example, the CPU, um, like with details uh, about the, the, what you have on your node. Then you will have something about the firmware. You will have the host name that was at the time when it was gathered. Um, uh, what was there. Then you will have the list of the interfaces and with some details about each of them. You will have the amount of RAM, the, um, the different disks that you have on the node, and all the fields that you have in this storage um, part can actually be used uh, in this root device hints. Then there will be um, another field called powered on true that will indicate if your um, server is actually turned on or turned off. And then the rest will be just reflecting what you have in the um, in the spec, except that you can find the state of your node that will be either like ready in the case it's waiting for being used or provisioned um, once it's like being used and, and running um, running the workload you want to have on top. So um, that's it for the bare metal host. Then we are going to move to the uh, cluster API provider metal cube and the integration uh, with uh, cluster API. So just um, it's basically this is basically the same slide as Ferro's already um, uh, presented, but with um, a bit more information about the cluster API and, and the controllers and how things um, work together. So you can see here that um, you have different objects di representing different things in Kubernetes. So you have the cluster, for example, that is the representation of a Kubernetes cluster. And then there is the metal cube cluster that is the um, infrastructure part of that um, Kubernetes cluster. Then you have the machine that represents a Kubernetes node. And then you have the metal cube machine that represents the um, actual infrastructure part of that machine. And then the bare metal host that represents the hardware. There is also the kubeadm config object that contains um, the that contains the kubeadm config um, part of the uh, that will be used to, to to provision this specific machine. So each of them are reconciled by different controllers. Uh, we won't go too much into the details right now, but if you have any questions, please write them in the in the Q and A, and then we will use that. Uh, we will answer that at the end of the presentation. So we are going now to like have a short look at what those objects are. So the, the cluster was the uh, description of the, of, the, of the Kubernetes cluster. And I would recommend for you to go into the cluster API book to see more detail about that part, but we are going to focus on the metal cube side. So for the metal cube cluster, um, it's basically just a representation of the um, endpoint um, that uh, you will have set up. Uh, for your Kubernetes cluster. So it contains, um, the only field that it contains is this control plane endpoint with a host and the port. So that's where your API server will be listening once your cluster is up. Then uh, we have the metal cube machine, and this is the, um, the infrastructure part of, um, of, the, of the machine. So the machine will contain everything related to the Kubernetes part, and the metal cube machine will contain anything related regarding um, in relation with metal cube. So that contains, for example, the image. Um, yeah, sorry, can you skip directly to the to the spec? 
Um, so it will contain the image that you want to have deployed on the node. So that's exactly the same thing as we've seen in the bare metal host. And then it will contain the, the provider ID that um, is the same, uh, same as in um, Kubernetes node. So that will be the exact same provider ID here as you have on the, on the Kubernetes node when it pops up. And then in the status, um, you will find all the addresses of your node um, so that where, where, uh, which address you can reach it, and then whether it's ready and, and ready to go. So um, this was for a very uh, short overview of the different objects that we have. And I think after that, we can probably like switch to the demo and show like how, um, every, ev how everything is yep. working. And then I think Pep can take over. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So we will show this in action using one of the repos that Ferus mentioned. There is, uh, you know, in the Git, uh, GitHub or for MetalCube, there is this <clears throat> Metal3.fm, which is a developer development environment for MetalCube, which actually simulates um, bare metal hosts using virtual machines. This can get confusing. I want to clarify that uh, the target of this is bare metal. Uh, the demo we will see virtual machines running, but they simulate um, virtual uh, sorry, bare metal hosts. Uh, a quick overview of, of the environment or, or of what the environment looks like. So we're going to deploy a new, a, a brand new Kubernetes cluster, a, a small one, just with one uh, control plane member and two worker nodes. Uh, if we go um, skip, so those, all of those three will be on, well, bare metal, which will actually be simulated. Uh, if you look at the next one, you will see that those bare metal servers are actually, well, it's, it's highlighted later. Um, the deployment of this uh, new cluster will be handled through a management cluster. This management cluster on the, on the um, uh, developer my, <clears throat> on metal 3 event, it's uh, actually a small cluster, a one uh, all-in-one cluster using Minikube. So um, in, in this management cluster with Minikube, we will have all the components, uh, Metalcube components, uh, VM, the bare metal operator, um, CAPM3, and also the cluster API deployed. Um, by the way, uh, uh, again, acronyms here, uh, sometimes we mention CAPI and CAPM3, that's uh, cluster API provider, Metalcube, and, and cluster API. So <clears throat> if you skip forward, um, the starting point of, of the demo will be um, the management cluster already deployed with all the components uh, in place and a few of the resources already in place. We will, we will see, we will be deploying a few more during the demo. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just to summarize, we have our management cluster. Actually, I think I can take over here from sharing the screen. One second. Okay, I hope you're saying this. Um, so, <clears throat> by the way, this is a screenshot of, of the website, metal3.io. There is a section there called Try It that actually goes through this uh, developer environment and, and explains it. Um, and how to run it. And by the way, this is a video. It has been, you know, I, I recorded this because, uh, well, uh, bare metal provisioning does take some time, a time that we don't have here. This is a small diagram of the slides that you were seeing. The, the, the environment is actually the implementation of it is you see a management cluster on Minikube, a target cluster. There are four networks here, one used for provisioning, one for the bare metal. Um, network is actually the access, the public network, let's say, of the cluster. Here we see, you know, just let me pause quickly to see what we have here. We see a virtual machine manager, again, showing the virtual machines that we have. Minikube here is not open at the moment, but you, you see it running is where the management cluster is. KubeCTL on this uh, host is configured to talk to the management cluster, you're running a mini cube. And we have two nodes, node zero, node one. Um, those, the, the consoles of those nodes are open here at the left. Um, okay. Um, 
just to confirm, we already have, as, as mentioned, we already have um, let's go quick, um, Metal Cube deployed. This is just um, the CAPM3 namespace. Um, Cluster API is, already, is also deployed, but on a different namespace. And we have, you know, those two nodes have already been represented into the management cluster in the form of bare metal hosts. Okay, this is the starting point. And we will see, you know, uh, we have this kind of uh, empty two node, two bare metal nodes where we want to deploy a new Kubernetes cluster, um, a new bare metal Kubernetes cluster using metal cube from the management cluster. Okay, so first we start um, by declaring the, and this is a cluster API object, a cluster that, that uh, Mail described, and we will not get into the details of, uh, oops, sorry, but yeah, I do want to mention, sorry, excuse me. I do want to mention that we also have here the, the metal cube part of the metal cube uh, implementation of this cluster with the uh, endpoint for the, for the API, uh, as Mail explained. So, we just declare that cluster here, nothing much will happen uh, other than the resources being created. And now we move to actually start deploying the cluster. Um, first, we start with the control plane. Um, again, some, some of those objects are uh, cluster API objects and we will not get into the details of this, but like the control plane, but this, um, this actually references a, a, a metal cube object, metal cube machine template. We didn't talk about templates, but, and we will not talk about them now, but imagine this is a kind of a generator of uh, metal cube machines, right? Uh, and, and here we have the, um, the, the fields of the spec that make a metal cube machine, like the image. Uh, here we will be deploying CentOS on those um, systems, which by the way, I didn't mention, but what you see on the consoles at the moment is the, the ironic Python agent image, just waiting for instructions, right? Um, we will deploy CentOS uh, on those systems as, um, you know, the operating system to run Kubernetes on. Okay. So once we declare this control plane and this, uh, this set of resources, uh, what we will immediately see starting to happen is that one of the, one of the hosts will be picked up as the target for this, um, for the control plane. It's a single node control plane. And we actually see here that, um, you know, node zero, the bare metal host that was declared has been picked up to, as the target for the cluster, um, sorry, for the control plane. And Ironic is now provisioning it. Uh, it's already rebooting and, well, it already, this is, by the way, this is the part that has been highly accelerated. This, this does take time time that we don't have, but you know, if you look at the, at the clock there at the right, you will see that it, it moves faster than reality. Anyway, uh, we are, and we are already done. We have this node zero has been provisioned with, um, okay, let me post, just post quickly here. The node zero now has been provisioned with the image that we said, and this is what we see here as provision. Um, we see a machine, this is a, uh, down here is the cluster API object mentioning that it's being provisioned. And in the middle, between the two, we have the metal cube machine object. So the physical part, let's say the bare metal part is already done, provisioned, uh, but the, the machine itself, uh, it's, not, it's not done yet. So we still don't have, in other words, we still don't have a, a Kubernetes node there. So now I'm SSH, this is an SSH into, into the node, right? So this is the new CentOS system that has just been uh, provisioned. Just taking a look after booting, uh, cloud init is still running and you can see that per instructions from the bare metal operator, it's actually running kubeadm to uh, install the Kubernetes cluster here. Um, well, it does, again, this is another part that has been highly accelerated uh, here. It does take a while to download the images. Uh, you can see Docker images here. Well, it started the API server, controller manager, etcd, core DNS, et cetera, et cetera. After a while, um, we will see, you know, containers actually starting to run the new clusters control plane. So let me accelerate this a bit. 
we have the API server already starting. Um, okay, well, you get the idea, right? So, um, okay, at this point, this this node is already this system already this uh, bare metal host node zero is already um, a single node new Kubernetes cluster. It's not ready yet. We don't have a CNI plugin deployed, so but we can move on and and actually grow the cluster by adding workers. So for this, we will use this manifest here. Um, again, this is a, a cluster API object, a machine deployment uh, we will, that you know we will use. By the way, I didn't mention the name. Uh, test one is the name of the cluster that we created. Uh, it was mentioned in the, in the declaration of the cluster. That's um, a reference here. Again, we will not get into the details of the of, of the fields here. Just get the idea that equivalently to the to what we did before, we also have a, a machine a metal cube machine template that will specify how the machines that will actually become nodes will look like. And again, we are using CentOS here. Applying this this manifest here. Uh, well, uh, the consequences are relatively similar to what we saw with the control plane. We will see one of the, well, actually we only have one uh, host left, one bare metal host left, node one, which is what has been taken here. And we here we are following the same, basically the same process as before. The, the node has been, well, it's being provisioned. Um, it will be imaged, let me skip that a bit faster. And just to recap, at this point we have the two nodes provisioned from a you know, physical point of view, bare metal point of view. Um, one of the machines, the, the, the machine, by the way, we, you can see here the provider ID of the, um, of the control plane machine, uh, while the, the new worker node is still being provisioned. Well, no, sorry, it, it is provisioned, but it's being configured as a worker node. Now, I, I, I log back in into the control plane. So this is our new cluster. And we still see, you know, even if the machine was already installed, like the physical machine, the bare metal host was already provisioned. Uh, it was not a node. Now it is, you know, um, it has been configured as a, as a worker node of this new cluster. So now the cluster has two nodes. They are not ready because they, as I mentioned, they don't have a CNA plugin here. This is what I'm doing here. This is completely unrelated to MetalCube itself, but we need uh, a CN uh, networking to, to make the cluster functional. In this case, I'm, I chose to deploy Cilium. Um, let me speed that up. Uh, but basically after Cilium gets deployed, uh, we will see that we have a fully functional, brand new um, Kubernetes bare metal cluster. Um, with those two nodes that we have here. Okay, both are ready, we have a cluster. Um, and just to, just to recap, um, this, this is a picture of the current situation. We have two bare metal hosts that have been provisioned. Uh, they represent uh, two cluster API machines, which actually host Kubernetes nodes. And okay, um, this is, you know, this we are not done yet um, because we want to grow the cluster here. You will have noticed that we have another bare metal or fake bare metal host here, node two. Uh, it's been switched off. It's not related, it has no relationship with the cluster yet. This is a new, let's say a new server that we want to add, you know, to as a new worker, make it a new worker for our new cluster. So. The first thing that we will do is uh, declare it as the bare metal host. Uh, you saw in the presentation that bare metal host, that the object can be very, uh, contain a lot of information, but this is just the, essential, the essentials. Uh, we are declaring node two, the boot MAC address, uh, credentials to access the BMC in the form of a secret, and that's it. Um, by, by creating those, um, to objects, we will see something that we didn't see in the previous ones because when we started the demo, the node zero and node one were already registered and, and inspected. 
what we will see now is that after creating this brand new bare metal host, uh, we will see, well, it appears here in the list of bare metal hosts and it's register, registering and inspecting. This is ironic that, you know, not if, uh, bare metal operator noti noticed that we have a new bare metal host and it's using ironic to, well, uh, find out how, how the node looks like. And it's booting now, and you, you can see that the node rebooted and Ironic is inspecting the, the hardware. Um, after a bit, again, this is another thing that has been um, accelerated for demo purposes. Um, but let me accelerate it even more. Oops, maybe a bit too much. Okay, uh, it became ready. This is the status that we saw when we started the demo. No zero and no two were already ready. We reached that point we reach that point with node two now. Okay, now we will use that new node to have another additional, a second worker to the new cluster. And we will use uh, a different trick here. So machine deployment is a cluster API object that uh, controls, you know, it's the equivalent of deployment for pods, but um, for machines. And we have the current cluster has one, you know, it has a machine deployment with one replica. Um, and as a, re as a reminder, we have basically, we have three um, bare metal hosts. The last of them, no two has been recently provisioned. What we will do is we will scale that machine deployment and add, you know, ask it to be, to have two replicas. So here, um, by declaring this new state of three replicas, we will see that we need a new machine. Uh, so th this will cause a new machine to be deployed, which will, um, you know, ask for a new metal cube machine, which will come as a bare metal host, will be provided by the bare metal host that we just added, uh, node two. And this is what's happening here. You see this, the, the same process that we followed before. We see node two being uh, now provisioned and that's basically uh, the same process as the previous node deployed. And that's basically the kit of the demo. So um, this is kind of a summary of the final situation. Again, we have a, a brand new Kubernetes cluster uh, with three nodes, three bare metal nodes. Um, I think, mm -hmm. uh, yes, here, here I think we're checking how, from the new cluster itself, how it, how it looks like. Well, the, the new node has only been provisioned, but the, the configuration has not finished. It's just a matter of waiting a bit more. Um, as, as it happened with node one, node two will eventually become um, a proper uh, note, we see it pop up here as not ready because we already configured uh, the CNI plugin. It will soon be ready and okay, this is it. We have, we have a, a new cluster. And I think that's it for the demo. That's, that's all I wanted to show. And I think we, we have like a few moments. I'll, I'll hand it back to Mile to continue. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll take it over. Um, thanks a lot, Pep, for oh, a nice yeah. demo. Yeah, let me share it back. If you can stop it, please. Yeah. All right. Yep. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yep. Uh, just one thing uh, to mention that I, I also saw in the integrations here on the chat that, um, and I forgot to mention in the beginning, um, we're not shipping any other OpenStack services with MetalCube. It's just standalone Ironic. And even when you are taking like, when MetalCube is using the Ironic, you don't have to manage the Ironic itself. You don't have to use any other OpenStack services like Nova or whatever. So because it's just like decoupled Ironic itself that we're using under the hood uh, to manage the actual bare metal service. Great. Um, so, if you're interested to contribute or if you think that the project might be a bit kind of interesting to you, um, we welcome you very, very much for any contribution or even just try to use it. Um, but contribution can be different. So you might want 
like to do some documentation changes that we're doing right now quite a lot. So if you have some skills in the documentation and if you want to share some some of your skills and do some uh, contribution to the Metal Cube, you are very much welcome. Uh, you might also be interested to have some feature requests that you might think would be valuable in to have it in Metal Cube. That is also really, really uh, nice to hear as well. Or you might have found some bugs that you might report, uh, which we first try to, of course, um, fix or the maintainers or the contributors of the Metal Cube. But uh, even if you have your own fix for that, it's even nicer than that. Or you can also take a part in the review processes of the pull request, uh, share your comments and give some reviews. Or you can also take a part or like help uh, in some talks or uh, webinars or presentations like this, what we're doing right now, or uh, write some blog posts. We have a metalcube.io website where, uh, where people are writing different blog posts on different features of the Metal Cube. And also you can, you might have some questions or the feedbacks that uh, again, uh, for the Metal Cube. Um, so this is also very much welcomed uh, from the community. And if you want to know uh, how to get started with the contribution, you, can, you might be uh, interested to check the link below. Um, and the last slide, I would say that we have a very diverse and really, really uh, interesting community. Um, Right now we have different contributors from different uh, organizations uh, across the world, um, like to name Red Hat, Ericsson, Mirantis, Dale, Fujitsu, and at and um, If you want to reach out the maintainers or the contributors or the whole community, the best way is to join the Slack, Kubernetes Slack uh, on Cluster API Bare Metal Slack channel. Um, or if you have some questions, you can also reach out uh, through the mailing list. Um, we do have community meetings, bi-weekly community meetings um, uh, at one UTC time, so you'll have to convert it yourself. Uh, that happens every Wednesday, we had Zoom, so you will find the link uh, below. Um, all the community meetings are recorded, uh, but apart from the community meetings, we also have uh, nice demos uh, of the Metal Cube that are uh, stored in the Metal Cube YouTube channel. Um, to visit the, the code, actual code, uh, it's uh, hosted on the GitHub uh, under the Metal Cube-IO. Uh, we also have a nice website where we're storing, as I said, like a blog post and some updates, uh, uh, what's happening on the Metal Cube. And you can also watch some updates on the Twitter as well. So you can, you will be able to find the slides uh, on the link below, um, Zoom link, community meeting recordings for the YouTube, and then Kubernetes Slack where you can find the channel to join the, the, the Metal Cube. And I think that's, all from us for today and I hope it was somehow informative and interesting to you uh, to listen. Yeah, thank you very much. Great. I think we can now take thank some you. questions. Yes, please. Uh, if you have any questions, please fill them out. We have about uh, nine minutes left for questions. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions. I, I think we already have a few of them um, asked and if anyone wants yeah, to. Yeah, I tried to answer them in uh, while we were going, but um, there's a couple of them that I think would be uh, nice to go maybe in a bit more details that we could um, uh, we could discuss now if there's no uh, further coming. Um, there, there were a couple of questions regarding like, what do you deploy on top of the, um, the host that you're provisioning? So um, Metal Cube has like two options. If you're go going with the cluster API, you will deploy a cluster directly like, and it will be like one Kubernetes, well, one physical hardware is one Kubernetes node. And that um, is uh, directed on this way. But if you don't use the cluster API provider metal cube, so the integration with cluster API, then you can of course deploy anything that you want on top of your node. So you could very well, uh, very well like deploy um, and hypervisor or like whatever you want on top and then deploy your Kubernetes on top of this. And you could even like <laughs> even have a nested like Metal Cube uh, level that um, you would use Metal Cube to us to provision those um, those uh, hardware nodes and then um, expose the, the virtual machine as like uh, fake hardware nodes, let's say, and then still use, um, use Metal Cube to, to provision them with the cluster API this time. So it's quite flexible like uh, because you have this cloud in it, you can pretty much do anything on on top of this. Um, then um, 
there, there were also questions about the operating systems that we can deploy. So Ironic is um, pretty much only writing the image that is provided to the disk. So with that regard, as long as you have an image, uh, a disk image of the OS you're trying to, um, to install, like, it can cover anything. So um, you just need this, uh, this image available and it can be downloaded uh, via HTTP. Um, the one limitation would be like if your image doesn't have the doesn't have the cloud in it or ignition or like similar uh, mechanism, then um, you will have to build in all the configuration um, in the image. So we'll, you will have to have a specific image per node. Um, otherwise, it will probably not not work out of the out of the box. Um, then some questions about the communications between bare metal operator and the BMC. So bare metal operator embeds something that is called Ironic, and Ironic is um, open stack project for the for the uh, management of the hardware. And this Ironic um, out of the box already embeds a lot of uh, lots of different um, protocols and like um, supports a lot of different hardware. So there's like IPMI, Redfish, ILO, like lots <laughs> lots of different uh, even proprietary like kind of uh, kind of protocols. And then the, um, so you just specify which protocol you want to use in um, when you specify the BMC of your host. So you say like if, if it's a Redfish or if it's IPMI or whatever, and then like it will configure, the uh, bare metal operator will configure Ironic to properly talk with your BMC. Um, and then there are some open questions that we probably should um, uh, address uh, because they don't yet have an answer. So, yeah, go ahead, Miles. <laughs> sure. Um, the first one was like, what virtualization product do you have good experience with? I could recommend looking at, um, I see the demo is Libbit. Surely you know a lot of options with, that would be incredible to hear. Uh, actually, I don't think we know that many options. We are like really uh, usually working with Libbit uh, pretty much. And then like um, directly like building the, the, the nodes on top of that. So sorry, no, <laughs> except maybe like if Pep or Ferus, you have like more insight in there. No, I would say the same. Like up until now, we've tried like delivered. Wow, yeah. Then uh, next question: Does MetalCube support provisioning of any type of storage mechanism, or is it outside of the scope of MetalCube? Um, it. I'm not exactly sure what you mean then in this case kind of like storage mechanism, if it's like just for the disks on the node, um, then, well, it depends on the image you're like, um, you're using, so this EPA uh, to, to write it to the disk, but it's like, it's a CentOS, so there's like quite uh, support of quite different types, um, uh, types of storage mechanism. Um, but then if it comes to, you're like trying to ask like for from the, Kubernetes cluster that is deployed on top of you, like uh, on top of it, for example, like for the persistent volumes, then that is um, outside of the scope of MetalCube. That's uh, rather with the configuration of your target cluster. Yeah. Then the next question, Red Hat is contributor. Do they yeah, plan to use MetalCube I, to provision OpenShift? That, that one is for you. Yeah, I think that's a question for me. Um, so the question is, if does, does OpenShift plan to use MetalCube <clears throat> to deploy OpenShift over Metal? The answer is <clears throat> already it already does. It's a slightly different in, in, in the sense that uh, especially the control plane part is deployed to slightly differently to what you saw in the demo. We The demo showed um, a full cluster API deployment using the Kube, KubeADM control plane. Uh, on OpenShift, what you would see, and by the way, <clears throat> you can always deploy OpenShift on, on, on bare metal providing your, you know, deploying your um, uh, nodes yourselves. But I understand that the question is automated deployment management of, of, of bare metal. And so OpenShift uses it for, let's say, um, the worker part. The control plane you would see it uses, OpenShift has its own installer, OpenShift installer that will take care of deploying the control plane. And in, in metal cube terms, you will see the, the hosts that represent the control plane, um, be, they will be flagged. So you saw in the demo provisioned. Uh, well, the, the control plane nodes for 
for OpenShift would be externally provisioned, and then the rest uh, of the worker nodes will uh, um, deployment is handled by MetalCube already. Yeah, thank you. Um, there, there was another question about like this storage mechanism, the, the precision was that it, can we support like Ceph of, or Rook? The answer is like it's outside of the scope. However, we are like working on features now to make the support of um, like having this kind of like storage deployed on your cluster feasible. Like for example, until now we were always like cleaning the disk during an upgrade. Now we are like working on a feature that would, um, that would allow you to uh, disable this cleaning so that you can save like those um, safe disks for example so that uh, you don't have too much data like flowing through your cluster during like uh, <laughs> rebalancing of the of the of the drive when during the upgrade so we are no it's outside of the scope but we are try trying to be like kind to it like to uh, make sure that it's it works smoothly on top of a metal cube deployed cluster um. Then was there another? All right, I think uh, that is all, all the time we have for today to answer Q and A questions. So thanks a lot once again, Mile, Parijun, and Feb for a great presentation and Q and A. Um, again, thank you for everyone for joining us today. The recording of the webinar and the slides will be online later today. So we are looking forward to seeing you at the future CNCF webinar, and uh, hopefully you will have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.